out this way. But you got to be constructive in Okay? Not destructive in anger. You can't be like a train moving down the hill on, a, on one track. That train goes, and that track goes two ways. And there, need, and there needs to be balance. How do you bring down and you know what? Yeah. I told him I believed in what he was doing. I don't believe in it no more. He's become the liar on the hill. He's no different than Trump. That gentleman who was speaking, who denied me to speak because he told me, he spoke at great length from me for like a half hour, that he was going to give me a voice to just tell, tell y'all, you guys, why I came down here from New York City. To show a different point of view. I, I in fact, was going to get, I, was, I, in fact, was going to get between the protesters and that statue if I had to bleed to do so, because I'm doing it for my grandchildren. I have three grandchildren, one son. I'm doing it not only for them, I'm doing it for the black. I'm doing, I'm trying to maintain our history. I'm trying, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to maintain our history and trying to, 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 to build up. Because too much of our history has been destroyed, been redacted. He wants to start from the bottom and go further down. You know, we've already been down long enough. Our history has already been denied to us long enough. That man's history was denied. As soon as I was, as soon as I just learned, I found out you know, two years that that man is a hero in my family. He has to be destroyed now, and he is not bowing. He is not bowing at all. You see his chin lifted up. It's like mine, like Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali picked up the mantle for him. In fact, everybody in my family picked up the mantle for him. Can you talk about the story of the statue from your perspective? Yeah, what is your relation to the statue? My great, great, great grandfather. Yep. And I wish you had met his great grandmother. I mean, his great granddaughter. Betsy, Bet Betsy Alexander Greyhouse. Mm -hmm. She died at 99 years old. Go to my Facebook page if you want. You can learn all about this. Cedric Turner, go to my Facebook page and you will read about Betsy Alexander Greyhouse and the pride she instilled in every last one of her children. And her daughter who had 12 children. And out of those 12 children that her daughter had, one of them had Muhammad Ali. Cassius Marcellus Clay. Now that's a legacy that you that they, that they would no sooner burn for whatever reason, you know, I pray and hope that 200 years from now, that the Black Lives Matter movement won't be treated the same way that movement was treated. Because that was the Black Lives Matter. That was the Black Lives Matter movement. Black Lives Matter movement back in uh, 144 years ago. What would be your message to your grandchildren when they look back and see all of this? My message to my grandchildren is listen to your grandpa. Hmm. Yeah. What about the people who want Not only listen to your grandpa, listen to your grandmother. The stories I could tell about her. Listen to your grandmother's gra grandmother. Uh, yeah, listen to your grandmother's grandmother, who I just spoke about, a little tiny black woman. You'll see on my Facebook page, she's flanked by Muhammad Ali and his brother, Rachman Ali. The pride of Louis. And he's trying to take that pride from us. They're trying to take that pride from us. And I refuse to let them do that without having a voice, at least a voice. And you don't come to me and promise no. You don't come to me and promise me you tried to quell me. No. You I don't care. I'm speaking now. You don't come to me. He wouldn't let me speak, so that's why I'm doing this. You don't come to me and promise me, oh, I'm, I got to, they got to hear you. I'm going to let them hear you. And then take an opportunistic picture with me, you know, or have me sing the Dave Chappelle show for him or something. I'm not a clown. He's not a clown. Mm -hmm. Ali's not a clown. That's our history, young man. Mm -hmm. Why don't you think That's our history because he, ble he bled. Ali bled. I bled. I'm 69 years old and I'll tell you I bled for the revolution. I've been in jail for the revolution. I write every day for the revolution. I'm coming out with a novel for the, not trying to publicize about the revolution from the, from the, from the slavery on up to 1936 when there was a lit, a, a hanging, a public, a public hanging, legalized hanging of a black boy in front of 20,000 white folks who descended upon Orangeburg, Kentucky. I did it as a play that was well received. And I wrote it as a novel. It's coming out in a month and a half from now. So. I'm here 
to maintain the legacy. And he is no different than what do they call those people, the left, uh, 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 the Antifados of- Antifa. Yeah, Antifa, who I was kind of like for, but if they're for destro destroying my history, my legacy, then I'd be there. I'll fight them tooth and nail, and they will have to kill me. Question, do you think they're using this Dutch as a prop? They're using it as a prop. Just like Trump? They're using it as, just like Trump uses used the church as a prop. The they're using this statue as a prop. Oh, thank you, my friend. Why don't they let your voice Because he knows that I'm going to tell the truth. He's, he sat there and listened, stood there and listened to me for a half hour, me telling the truth, and he didn't want, that's why he came up to me. I thought he came up to me because he was interested in the truth and that he was going to let me speak because I didn't let them know I was coming down. I wasn't going to come down. I canceled the reservation last night because I didn't want to come down here. But the ancestors were calling to me. And they, I'm an empath. You've got to know this. I'm an empath. And the ancestors kept calling me and calling me, particularly me, this one. He's been calling me ever since I've, I've known he, that he exists. And I'm not going to start stop voicing my opinion. That's what he taught me. That's what Muhammad Ali taught me. And I'm not going to let some young snippet, you know, who's using the revolution for his own reason. The nerve of him telling me that the black, that the old people have, you know, have had their say, and that we shouldn't say it on the backs, on our backs, he would not be here. I'm too disgusted to talk anymore.